Should we nudge him a little bit? Little one. Oh man, he's just beautiful. My name is Susan Middleton and I'm a photographer and author. Whoa. <laughs> I've really grown to appreciate invertebrates because I really believe they're the little things that make the world go round. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah? Let me try again. Invertebrates are usually overlooked and uh, hard to see because they're small and they're cryptic and less appreciated than, of course, the, the big fish and the marine mammals. They really are the foundation for all life in the sea and for all life in the planet. So I'm very passionate about them and I want to show them to people, show the people how beautiful and interesting and diverse they are. Hermit crabs are one of my favorite invertebrates. And they're a very successful animal group. There's between 1,500 and 2,000 species of hermit crabs. They've been around much longer than humans have, 90 to 100 million years. I've photographed hermit crabs in the northwestern Hawaiian Islands, and also in the Line Islands, which is in the central Pacific. And these are both coral reef habitats and then also off the coast of Washington State, which is a nearshore non-coral reef habitat, but lots of hermit crabs. Yeah, he's in a good spot now. I'm visually isolating them in an aquarium, but once they get in there, they just want to pull back in their shell, or they want to like run around very frenetically. Ah, look at that. He's getting kind of wild now. They do not respond well to direction. Oh! <laughs> this, is a, this is a hermit crab that a friend of mine made for me. She uh, crocheted it uh, and gave it to me for a, a gift one time. Um, hermit crabs are a crustacean group that evolved to having only a partially solid shell. The forward part that sticks out of the shell that they live in is, is hard, generally. But there's a, a body in the back here that's very soft, and so um, evolutionarily, they had to seek out some sort of structure, a special house that's not really part of their natural body. They have no protection from predation or damage to their tissues or anything like that if they're outside of their shell. This I call the nudist. Really, you can see very clearly what a hermit crab looks like when it's exposed. This is the abdomen, and then these little hooks here actually hold the crab inside that shell to grab on. And this same crab, different view, is um, you know sort of coveting this shell. They switch shells as they grow. They outgrow their shells quite readily, and they have to physically go out and find other shells. Generally, the limiting thing in hermit crab populations are the number of shells to be able to be used. In areas like Hawaii, where there's not a lot of snail shells laying around loose, there's a lot of competition for shells as you get bigger. They tend to fight for them and will kick other ones out of their shells to get that shell if they think it's a better one. So they do check out the shells and they size it up and, and they, some of them will actually jump out of their shell, get in it, sort of take it for a test drive, and if they don't like it, sometimes whatever deciding factor it is, they'll hop out of that shell and get back into their old one and move on. Hermit crabs don't always find shells. They'll seek other things, and in, in this case, it's a sponge. It's actually a living sponge. And the sponge grows around the crab to create this cavity. One of the most interesting things I've discovered about hermit crabs is that they're like living, roving communities. All kinds of things live in association with the hermit crab. There are barnacles that live there. And one of the most beautiful associations are the anemone hermit crabs, where a crab will seek out anemones and attach them to their shell. The anemone is like totally out. Yeah. It looks like a, a fancy hat. It's like a chapeau. It's a true commensal relationship. Both parties are benefiting. Looks pretty good, yeah. Mm. 
the anemone gets a benefit because as the crabs eat, and there's just stuff being stirred up into the water. The anemones get a little extra food out of it. The crab gets a benefit because these tentacles are stinging tentacles. Predatory fish, they'll just get a face full of tentacles. That's the best one so That's far. That's the best one so far. And when hermit crabs leave their shell to transfer into another shell, they will actually take those anemones with them. This is a larval hermit crab. So this is how they begin their lives, living in the water column, actually part of the plankton. Looking more like a shrimp, because these guys evolve from shrimp. And then eventually it'll start hanging out in the bottom, and then it'll start looking for a little shell. hiding in a shell it has worked very well for them for 90 to 100 million years. But the most serious threat now is ocean acidification with climate change. There's a lot of carbon that has sunk into the oceans, tending to acidify the oceans. And all the animals that depend on shells to survive are threatened by that the shells will dissolve in the acidified water. So it affects coral, it affects all the marine organisms that depend on um, calcium for their shells and for their survival, which are all of the hermit crabs. I don't like to think of the world without any hermit crabs. Hermit crabs are just a wonderful invertebrate group that show you the diversity of life in the oceans and just survival, you know, survival at its best.